DaVinci Resolve is one of the best editors out there, rivaling After Effects with ease. However, most of y'all don't know the new methods to make high quality vids. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show y'all the new method for how to do zoom transitions in DaVinci Resolve. Lock in and let's get into it. So the three main things that you need for good zoom ins in DaVinci Resolve are framers, momentum, and proper motion blur. I'm going to be talking about all of that and also I'm going to be providing a project file so you guys can go into it, mess around with it, learn in general. And this is going to help you improve a lot. And another thing that I also recommend getting is the Ikawa editing pack. It comes with framers, shakes, and a bunch of things completely for free, by the way. That will help you bring your edit to life and I will use it a lot in this tutorial. But if you don't want to get it, that's perfectly fine too. Let's keep on watching. So I got my cyberpunk clip right here and I want to put a zoom in onto this girl. So what I'm going to do is go into the fusion page, drag in a transform node like so. And we're going to be focusing on the size parameter right here. Keyframe at the end of the clip right here. And then you want to go back like four to five frames. And then I'm going to go to the last frame and let's pick a value of around, I don't know, like 1.1.15. A big misconception that I see about zoom ins is that you guys pick like some really, really high values. And I mean like really high, like you sometimes zoom into like two. And when you zoom in too much like that, it degrades the quality of the clip. So if you're dealing with a 4K clip like mine, when you zoom in, it's kind of decreasing your quality. So if you have a 1080p clip and then you zoom in a bunch, if you zoom in two times, now it's kind of looking like a 720p clip. You know what I mean? So you don't want to go in too far. And also it's the framers and the momentum that's going to really bring it to life. So I'm going to pick a small amount right here, 1.168. Let's open up the spline editor, and press S, bring this curve down like this. You don't want to bring it way too far down because it will come under this one line right here you want to bring it kind of up and then hold alt and drag this one to the right and you don't need to bring it all the way to the right just do a graph that looks good you know just keep playing around with it until the graph looks good now I something like this so now let's complete the zoom in by going to the next clip getting a transform node zooming out a very very small amount because I really really do not want motion tile in this edit so I'm zooming out a super small amount and let's carry this movement over to like around frame 14 to 16 i'm gonna do frame 15 and reset it back to one like that take the graph control a move this one up hold alt drag it to the left and now we have a zoom in let's play it together and it is a little bit weird and i do want to pivot over to this girl so i'm going to take the pivot point move it over go into the second comp take the pivot point and move it over like that uh oh hold on there you go and we nailed it now for the framers oh and the motion blur a lot of you guys are tempted to go into the motion blur tab click it crank up the quality crank up the shutter angle this is not really how you want to do it. you want to be a little bit more intentional with it first thing that i notice if we go to the last frame we have this half opacity looking ghosty motion blur and to fix that you use sensor bias if you set sensor bias to one the opacity of the motion blur will be completely solid meaning you won't have those ghosty trails anymore and they'll look ugly so once you have that and you turn up the quality and turn down the shutter angle a little bit you'll be dealing with a frame that looks a whole lot more pleasing than what we had before like this yuck so yeah i highly recommend messing around with the shutter angle and keeping the center bias on one so everything looks proper let's go to the next fusion comp now motion blur probably isn't really too necessary since it's such a small zoom in but i'm gonna do it anyway make sure the center bias is on one yeah you can barely see it but it looks nice now let's get some shakes in there so when you're doing zoom ins and you have a shake you want to make sure that the shake comes before the transform node not after if you do it after the transform node you'll have more issues with edges and whatnot so you want to make sure it happens before i'm using ikawa shake final feel free to copy my settings low frequency i prefer doing low frequency shakes for stuff like zoom ins but you may have to do something different depending on your use case scenario so just do whatever works for you let me turn up the amplitude quite a lot at the end go back and i'm kind of judging how this shake will look off of vibes here so yeah maybe i need to turn up the frequency a little bit more let's get shake final again on the next clip turn down the frequency keyframe at the start all right i'm kind of okay with this graph right here let me and again i'm just going based off vibes here with the shakes um i think a little bit more tilt right here would look nice okay and to me that looks kind of fine you may have to refine it a little bit more but for the sake of this tutorial i'm keeping things kind of simple all right next for the blur um 
this all goes under the umbrella of framers the most common thing that i do is lens blur keyframe it like that and then on top of the lens blur i get erode dilate on box and i turn up a little bit more like that and this kind of gives it the look of i'm pretty sure bcc lens blur obs it looks pretty similar in my opinion um it's just the most common thing that i do you don't have to follow it you could just get like any blur like defocus it or whatever um and another thing i like to do is get is get brightness contrast and turn it down for like the next frame like that and then on the next clip let's get brightness contrast again turn it down just a little bit keyframe it go somewhere towards the middle put it back to normal make a graph like this and let's see some more framers that i can try here so with framers for zoom ins i like using ikawa framer zoom blur stylized what you have to do is put the border width on negative get the border width and put it on negative one go one frame over put it back to one and another frame where you could put is maybe move color it might look kind of clean turn down the blend a bit like that let me put the framer before the shake and all that there you go now it's proper okay let's get one more framer in there just to carry over all of that momentum so let's see what else we got we got fast tint could use that yeah let me turn down the saturation there that's looking pretty nice let me just take the blend keyframe it there you go so for these two frames at the start we have some interesting framers keyframe zoom blur i mean keyframe zoom amount put it down to zero all right clean that is how you do a zoom in now for the zoom out okay so as you guys can see for the zoom out it's the same stuff you get a transform node framer for zoom blur and then a shake and here's what the graph for the transform note looks like just want to do a little j curve like that and do a very very small value of around 0.9 you don't want to have too many edges in there and then carry that all over to the next clip start the zoom out on the second clip make sure it starts out at 1.2 and then reset that down to one do a graph that sort of looks like this it's not really like a j curve but it's sort of put a shake a framer for zoom blur at the start and then keyframe brightness and contrast and now you have a nice zoom out so in order to do a zoom out transition like this the steps are relatively the same as the zoom in transition but you kind of just have to flip things around so if i go into this comp right here I have the same transform node, but the graph, instead of it going up, it's going down. And the last value is 0.9, right? And then when I go over to the next clip, get that transform node. The first value is something higher, like 1.1 or 1.2, right? And it zooms out all the way down back to one and around frame 14. And again, you don't have to memorize these values. You kind of just need to watch your clip and go with the vibe of how the song is and place the keyframes accordingly you don't need to use markers for that either you really just need to watch it and then just like think to yourself like eh, would it look better if the zoom ended at frame 13 or frame 3 you know so just do it and see if it looks good and go with the vibe of it you know and that's the fun of editing you know what i mean now let me tell you something about momentum uh when you have momentum the framers don't really need to make sense they just need to be blurry so it looks like it's zooming out a lot so what I did here, I took this clip again where it zooms out and all I did was just add a little bit more brightness and contrast at the end so it's darker because the next frame is literally going to be black and then the next frame after that is just like some random scenes with zoom blur and radial blur on it. Like literally just very simple stuff. Then the next comp is Sapphire Random Edits kawa x shake flicker and i spammed that across the next couple of fusion comps spaced them out a little bit and then went to this clip and i made sure it's really dark because it's coming from a pretty dark framer with brightness and contrast and i think i want to add a little bit of lens blur like that yeah that looks kind of clean and then when you play all back then when you play all back together like that it all looks pretty clean so that's how you do a zoom blur with momentum feel free to check out the project file you'll learn a lot from it anyway guys hope you all enjoyed the video cloud vfx out